You're not gonna wanna lick, drink, or taste that. It does not taste good. What are the grease things called? Greasers? 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 Grease yeah. Alright everyone, this is your friendly neighborhood Pine King. Today's episode we really want to do two things. One, we have an announcement for you, so stay tuned. We'll get to that pretty quickly. Number two, this is a how-to video. How to maintain your MT-85. So if you have a Bobcat MT-85, this is the stuff you're going to want to do on a regular basis to make sure that this is running top notch. Normally what we're going to be doing is showing you how we build ponds here in Minnesota and how we're just enjoying the aquascape lifestyle. But today we're going to give you a little bit of a how-to. Follow along, we're going to give you the how-to. And then there is a preview. Stay tuned because we're switching our episode release dates. We only do once a week, so if you're considering subscribing, if this video helps you in any way, hit that subscribe button, give us a comment. All right, everyone, let's get to maintaining this MT-85. How about it? Thanks for joining us. All right, so when you're tightening your tracks, you're going to want what size is that, Mark? First step is to take off the plates. And this is 9 16 on our multi-tool. Okay, we carry a multi-tool in our toolbox. We find it helpful a lot of times. 9 16 thank you. What else do you need to do the tightening? After you take off that plate, you will need a one and a half inch to All get right. to that big bolt to tighten it and to loosen it. All right, we also want a tape measure. Tape measure. All right, let's go do the track tension. All right, first step you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna measure your distance to see how far it is. Generally, if you take this plate off, that has a nice little measuring stick for you too. So one, one thing we can do is uh, you take off that plate and see if there's a gap, we'll show you. So that's a 9 16 that Mark is using right there on our multi-tool, multi-socket multi tool. All right, so you're gonna try and get this to line up. That's four and a half inches. So right now, maybe it's just a little too tight, but we're gonna leave it because tighter is a little better when you're dealing with wet conditions. So, but if we were to tighten it, you are gonna use what Mark said earlier. What is it? Inch and a half. Inch and a half. Inch and a half. All right, so our tracks are good, but these are the tools you would want. You want about four and a half inches or the plate that you take off is your measuring tool for you. So what we're gonna do next is we'll do the air filter. We'll show you the air filters. So this is your air filter canister right there. Very easy to take off. It can do it with one hand, I think. We'll also be repairing this flap. See how dirty that is. We've blown that out a few times. You don't wanna blow the inside one out. So we decided we're gonna just go ahead and change these. So we'll show you that real quick because we got those parts with us right here. That you can all do by hand, don't need any tools. All right, that's our new flapper. New filter, here's your part number from Bobcat. Look at those, nice and clean. Mm, that's your part, that's what it looks like. All right, let's go put those on. Pretty basic. Start with the small one. Fittings on the inside. And we'll just sit in there, nice and easy. But look at the difference. Look at the difference in those. New and old. So good to change that out. <laughs> that was like definitely needed. So we're switching those out. Yep. Very easy. You just get it in there so it's nice and straight, pushed in, doesn't fall out. And then you put the filter over the top of that. And this is just the new flapper. It'll get stretched over that. Mark will probably have to do that because it probably takes two hands. Boom, air filter on. So there's an arrow on the top of this. Lift, latch, and rotate cover. Uh, you wanna line up your lock and unlock on the top here. Lock it into place. There we go. All right, we are locked in. Boom, air filter changed. Pretty quick, pretty easy. So if you are ever worried about your maintenance schedule, there is an easy, easy way to figure out what you should be doing, where your grease points are, because we did put on new tracks. We got some video for you of that too where we got caught up with our tracks had fallen off, fallen off, and we knew we needed to replace them. And we got into a bind where we couldn't do it ourselves and called in Tri-State Bobcat. They came and helped us change out those tracks. What do you find it in there? Well, I've seen a couple times where they just get uh, a bunch of dirt filled up so you can't slide them all the way in. And I think 
that's probably what going on. That's it. Man, you get in such a habit of thinking these things are so complicated. Yeah, they're really simple. That seemed to have gone in quite a lot farther. Yeah. Holy cow. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. When your hood is popped, you have a nice list of things to do. This is where all your grease points are. Look how handy that list is. Look at that. You're gonna wanna make sure you keep greasing. All right, Mark, what do we got? This is our heavy duty grease that we like to use for our machines. Oh. Option one, the cheaper option is the old grease gun manual pump. Slide it in and pump it to grease in. About $35, right? Yeah. But the better of the two options is this guy. So we went with the DeWalt grease gun. It has a nice flashlight on it. What's nice is it puts the grease under pressure. So there's some PSI that actually comes out of this, which can sometimes help you blow out some of those joints that can get stuck. And having the hose, you can get into different areas versus it's hard awesome. metal, it doesn't move. You want a, some kind of a tool. We use an owl for cleaning out the joints. The, what is it called? What are those? Mm. What are the grease things called? Greasers? 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 Yeah. Grease. So the spot where you want to grease can sometimes get full of trees. There is a technical term for that, and I'm sure someone will put that in the comments for us. All right, let's get to doing the joints and greasing it. All right, we're going to start with the wheels. It's basically a mirror. Each side has the same grease points, except for the middle one. So there's a middle one right there. It's a good time to show how to change a grease gun. I guess we're going to show you how to change out our grease gun. You'll notice when you open it up, one side is not fully closed. We'll put that side in, keeping this pulled out the whole time. Pop the top. You're not going to want to lick, drink, or taste that. It does not taste good. Righty tighty. And then put the plunger back in, and you are all set to be greasing again. So we'll go back to that middle joint. All right, now we'll show you how to get to the ones underneath. It's just simple. To check your hydraulic fluid, you wanna make sure that you raise up all your hydraulics all the way. And then to check out your hydraulic fluid on the MT-85. So it looks like we're a little low on hydraulic fluid. Right here is a little spot. I'm gonna add some of that to this and that'll, uh, that'll be helpful to make sure this guy keeps running. You want that ball floating about midway when you have all of your stuff extended like this. All right, well that's how you check your hydraulic fluid. All right, to get the last two, you gotta drop your attachment. You're gonna have to take off the forks here real quick. All right, so now that we have the fork detached, just lift up your levers, open. Now we'll be able to get to our grease shirts on the inside. All right, remember how it said we were low when that was all the way up? Right there is what it's gonna look like when it's full. So we are low, but it, it is illusion because when we have everything down it looks like everything's full so that's why you have to put everything up on the hydraulics and right now we're just going to check the oil and that'll be it for doing maintenance on your mt85 all right you're going to want a paper towel use the shop rag style all right mark where is that located just underneath your overflow for your coolant is where you'll find your your dipstick for the mt85 to check your oil it should be good because we just recently did an oil change on this so stay tuned because we'll show you a how-to on that. It's looking pretty good, nice and full, right? We're good. We're good, all right. All right, there is a dot on there. You wanna make sure that that is under oil right there. So we're doing good, everything looks good. All right, so that's us doing our maintenance on our MT85 by Bobcat. We did all that in about 20 minutes. You're gonna wanna make sure to stay on top of that maintenance. It helps so much. Thank you for joining us. If you learned something today, if we helped in any way, make sure to hit that subscribe button for us. It really does help us out. And then make sure that if you are a regular viewer, you tune in next Thursday. That's right. We're starting our new release schedule Thursday, 7 p.m. starting next week. So we'll talk to you guys on Thursday.
sponsored by Pond King Water Gardens. Living works of art, one yard at a time.